Hello and welcome to this online lesson. I am Mr. Hoven and today we're going to continue learning about President Andrew Jackson as he takes on the banks in Andrew Jackson versus the Bank of the United States. His biggest problem with the bank was the bank was too powerful. That's right, it had too much power and in his mind was not working for the people of the United States. And President Jackson took his war on the banks right to the throat of the matter, right to the jugular. Like many Westerners, he believed, again, it was too powerful. This bank of the United States had been subject of dispute since its early days. The bank had great power because it controlled loans made by state banks. So when the bank's directors, the national bank's directors, thought that the state banks were making too many loans, they limited the amount these banks could lend. The cutbacks angered farmers and merchants who borrowed money to buy land or finance new businesses. And there were three kind of gripes that Jackson had with the bank. Jackson and other leading Democrats thought the bank was undemocratic as it was controlled by only a few elite bankers. And they were private bankers, not public. Furthermore, he thought these men were agents of special privilege who grow grew rich with public funds, and he especially disliked Nicholas Biddle, president of the bank since 1823. And Biddle came from a wealthy Philadelphia family. He was well qualified to run the bank, but he was also arrogant and vain. Jackson felt that Biddle used the bank to benefit only the rich, and he also resented Biddle's influence over certain members of Congress. Biddle at this time was a Whig, which was a new political party that was budding. These Whigs who were against the what we know now as Republicans. Now, Biddle and other Whigs worried that the president might try to destroy the bank. Two Whig senators, Henry Clay and Daniel Webster, thought of a way to save the bank and defeat Jackson at the same time. The bank's charter was not due for renewal by Congress until 1836. However, Clay and Webster wanted to make the bank an issue in the 1832 election. They persuaded Biddle to apply for renewal early. The Whigs believed that most Americans supported the Bank of the United States, and if Jackson vetoed this bill to renew the charter, they felt that he would anger voters and lose votes and eventually the election. So Clay pushed the charter renew bill through Congress in 1832. Jackson was sick in bed when he heard that Congress had renewed the bill's charter. The bank, he said, is trying to kill me, but I will kill it. And Jackson vetoed this bill angrily. He had two main reasons. First, he declared the bank unconstitutional. Even though the Supreme Court had ruled in the bank's favor, Jackson believed that only the states, not the federal government, had the right to charter banks. Second, Jackson felt that the bank helped aristocrats at the expense of the common people. Jackson warns, when the laws undertake to make the rich richer, and the potent more powerful, the humble members of society, the farmers, the mechanics, and the laborers, who have neither the time nor the means of getting like favors for themselves, have a right to complain of the injustice of their government. And as planned, the Whigs made the bank veto a major issue in the election of 1832. Henry Clay was chosen by the Whig party to run against Jackson. Surprisingly, Jackson won a huge victory, and it showed that the common people had rejected the bank and supported Andrew Jackson. So the election of 1832 never really turned out like the Whigs had planned it. Andrew Jackson won, the Whigs lost, and the bank was fit to close. However, Jackson wasn't going to wait until the charter ran out in 1836. He ordered the Secretary of Treasury, Roger Taney, to stop putting government money in the bank. Instead, this money was put into state banks. They became known as pet banks because Taney and his friends controlled many of them. Hmm. That kind of sounds like what Andrew Jackson was mad about with the Bank of the United States in the first place, that a few people owned the bank. Interesting. The loss of federal money, however, crippled the Bank of the United States, and it closed in 1836 and contributed to a small economic downturn. Well, that's about all we have for today. Look forward to joining you next time, and we'll see you then.